years and years after I realized that this is what I had struggled with as a teenager, I saw an image that made me realize um, that this is what I had seen, and it was an alien picture of someone with really thin, translucent skin where you could see all of their veins and even their facial features were just a little bit different than what a human's face would look like. Mm. And I spent years of my teenage life thinking that I looked like an alien, very much different from every other human that was around me. So how does that affect your life then when you're seeing that in the mirror? Are you withdrawing from people? Are you shy? Like, what is it doing for you? Um, I had images all over my mirror so I didn't have to always, when I was getting ready, didn't have to see myself. I would put things in front of me so I could just get a glimpse of what I needed to see to get ready um, in the morning. I took dance lessons for years and I learned how to take um, lessons and do routines with other students in the class, but never looking at my reflection in the mirror, always looking at someone else's reflection in the mirror. I was very insecure, very, very insecure, and I um, always compared myself to other people, my friends and yeah, it was terrible. It was awful. It does sound awful. So th you're sitting here today and being very confident. So what happened to change that? Oh gosh, well, there was a few different things. The first thing was um, I was I was raised in a wonderful family that loves Jesus. And so I knew the story of Jesus. I knew that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. I knew that Jesus loved me. Um, I was raised in that environment. And that really helped set a foundation for when I was in this season of my teenage years mm -hmm. of hearing in the back of my mind the truth that there's a God that loves me. And so the first thing that happened was I kind of had this moment of, I think that there's a chance that I'm believing a lie because I'm not getting the reactions from people around me that I should be getting if I look so hideous. They should be gasping in horror when they see me and they're not. So um, the first thing I did was I went to a woman in church who I thought was the most beautiful woman there. And I said, I think that I'm believing a lie and I would love it if you would pray for me um, because I think that I'm ugly, but maybe I'm not. And she just laughed and she said, oh girl, you're not ugly. And she laid her hands on me and she prayed for me. And in that moment, I encountered the love of God really for the first time um, personally. And when I got home that day after church, I remember closing the door to my bedroom and thinking, okay, I, I got to look in the mirror. And, I don't want to see what I've seen. Like, if God really met me, I want to see what he sees. Mm. And I carefully, kind of gingerly walked towards my mirror and I moved the things out of the way. And what I saw looking back was something I hadn't seen. It was a human being. It was like an extreme makeover experience. And I was touching my face and looking and saying like, this is me, like, I'm a human being. Uh, like so you were that, basically healed. Like, like oh, it was yeah. something that had a change in your brain. Completely. For you to see differently. Completely, yeah. And years later is when I learned the term body dysmorphia. I didn't know that was a thing. But I, I had had my first daughter and I was home and I was watching a show on TV and I called my mom in tears and I said, I just saw this thing on TV called body dysmorphia. That's what I had. That's what the enemy was trying to put on me wow. to cover me from seeing what God had really created. Now body dys dysmorphia obviously is extreme and not everyone experiences that, but pretty much everyone experiences not liking yourself, criticizing yeah. yourself, being hard on yourself. Yeah. So what would you say to somebody watching now who, who deals with that? Because sometimes the criticisms we have of ourselves they're not untrue. Right. Like you may have a big nose or big feet or you know, need to lose 10 pounds, whatever it is, right? Yeah. How do you overcome that? Ephesians 2.10 says that we are God's workmanship created by God for good works. Uh, one of the translations says that we are his masterpiece. And when I read that, I thought about what a masterpiece is, a masterful like work of art, and what a masterpiece is to the person who created it. Um, and that really revolutionized the way that I looked at myself. I thought God sees me as his masterpiece. And, and I had this experience um, where I was praying one day and I said, I think I need more of the love of God. I need to understand that he loves me, not just all the little children in the world, not just all of humanity, but he, I need to know that he sees me and he loves me. Mm. And I began to pray that way. And so that's one thing I always encourage people pray that you see God's love for you specifically. And, and what I saw that day was this beautiful vision of God and Jesus sitting side by side and kind of like leaning in and looking at me. And God nudged Jesus and was kind of like, that's my girl, like look at her. Kind of like the way when 
a toddler is about to take their first steps off of the coffee table towards the couch and the grown-ups watching don't want to interfere and so they'll kind of get each other's attention and begin to look and the look of excitement and awe on the parents' faces as their kids take their first step. That's the closest thing I could explain. The, the, the look I saw on Jesus' face towards me. And so I always encourage people, pray, pray that you see that God loves you and then understand that you're his masterpiece and he doesn't create junk. He loves you and he created you exactly the way that you are for a very specific purpose that only you can walk in. So comparing yourself to somebody else or saying she's better at that or she looks this way or whatever, like there's no, all of that just dies when you begin to see that I'm God's masterpiece because God has a plan for my life. You know, we live in a culture too where beauty and youth is so highly prized. Mm -hmm. But I always say there's always going to be someone better looking than you, smarter than you, yep. more successful than you. And there will always be somebody less good, less good looking than you, less smart than you. You know, like there, sure. there will always be someone you can compare yourself favorably and unfavorably with. Right. So how do we live in this culture where, you know, these things are prized, but no, not everyone or no one really can live up to those standards? Right. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about if you've been forgiven much, that you love much. And I feel like as we really encounter the cross of Jesus for ourselves and realize how much we've been forgiven of and how he's just freely offered us this gift of salvation and wipes away all of our wrongs and wipes away our past. Well, I now am in a position that I can freely offer that to the world that's around me. So I don't need to compare myself and get anything from it when I see someone who's smarter than me or prettier than me or more gifted than me or who's not as any of those things than me. That's not where my validation is coming from and that's not where any worth is found. The worth is found in I am a daughter of God. Mm -hmm. You are a daughter of God and I can cheer you on as you run your race doing what God has uniquely called you to do as I run my race and do what God has uniquely called me to do and just really be aware that all around us, the world wants us to fall into that trap. But as a child of God, I, I just can't. I have to have that guard up and say, nope, I'm running my race. I'm the masterpiece. Stay so in my good. lane.